So our two new South arrays have been installed now for a couple of weeks, so I'd like to show you the process of getting those installed in this video. But for those of you who are unfamiliar with what we're trying to do here, I'm actually running an experiment now comparing a string inverter against microinverters to see uh, the various pros and cons of those two systems. So I'm very excited to see what the data is going to be like for those. Um, but this was an interesting install because uh, we actually have an existing east-west split array with a battery system by Give Energy. So these two new arrays uh, had to be installed alongside that, which posed some interesting challenges for the installation team. Uh, we got Green Team 1 to do the install, and if you're interested in um, getting a quote from them, please check the description below and let them know that I sent you if you're uh, uh, in the southwest area. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's take a look at the install and uh, see how we all got on. Yeah, it's begun. So this is about twice as much scaffolding as we had when we had the original panels installed. And I think the main reason for that is that we've got to have this uh, guardrail up the side uh, in that central section there, which is where the new panels are going. Because before we didn't need that, the uh, panels were only going on the, uh, the east and the west sides, whereas now we're adding these extra south panels we need that extra guardrail for safety. That's what I'm assuming. Jeez, it is absolutely filthy out there. This is not the best day to be installing solar panels on one's roof, especially given that I want to actually do some filming. We shall see how it goes, but uh, it might be more of an indoors sort of filming day today, but hopefully the uh, afternoon will brighten up a bit, but goodness me, it's just absolutely starting blattering it down there. So this is the plan, we've got a 1.5 kilowatt Fox ESS string inverter that will be connected to three of the panels. And then we've also got these Enphase IQ8HC microinverters, those run at 380 watts and those will be connected to the other three panels. And so obviously the um, panels themselves are 460 watts, which means um, the uh, string inverter has got plenty of capacity um, to cope with all three uh, panels and the microinverters um, they might clip uh, when we have a very, very sunny day in the height of summer because the panels could generate up to 460 watts, but the microinverters are limited to 380. So that's part of the interesting experiment that we're doing is to uh, see whether that makes much of a difference or whether the benefit of microinverters in uh, um, any sort of shade or whatever um, might uh, outperform the uh, string inverter. So yeah, we shall see what happens between those two systems. Alright, quick status update part way through the first day. We've got a new board gone in and this is going to become our sort of solar hub that will take all of the existing Give Energy stuff plus all of the new stuff in one central place. Plus we've got the Shelly device in there which will give us the ability to monitor all of the power from the two new systems which is going to give me nice clean data to do my analysis on. So yeah, it's all looking quite neat. I think the uh, um, end phase uh, control box is going to go to the left of that as well and I'll get some more footage of that later. Brilliant. All right and this is the other side of the wall so we've got the uh, Fox inverter installed well it's in place at the moment we've got a couple of isolators below that which are going to get wired into the new um, DC side of the uh, of the array that's going into the Fox unit and uh, more holes are going to get drilled through the wall as well to go through to the other side where I just was um, to uh, hook into the new uh, consumer unit that's gone in there. So sadly, the weather has been so shocking today that there's been very little progress actually installing the panels on the roof. Um, but uh, hopefully the weather will be a bit better tomorrow morning and the roofer will come back and finish the job with any luck. Um, but there's been a reasonable amount of progress inside. So uh, I'm gonna do a roundup of uh, day one in a little bit. And um, yeah, we'll pick up where we left off tomorrow morning. Okay, end of day one, and uh, we've got a reasonable amount of progress in here. We've got a new hole in this box that was uh, covering over all of the meter and other stuff that's in there. Um, so this is required because um, they needed access to 
add a few Henley blocks um, and those are in place now ready to take some inputs that they can then split for um, other sources. Um, this box here is the original uh, one for the, uh, the Give Energy system. That's going to get removed because it's all going to get removed over to uh, this new um, consumer unit here and the end phase uh, control box is going to go to the left of that and that will um, look all nice and neat in here. So uh, that's everything in this room and then we'll go through to the, uh, to the carriage which is on the other side of this wall. So there's still a fair bit of equipment in here but it's a little bit tidier than it was earlier which is good. So uh, progress inside here, we've now got a new bit of trunking that's coming through the wall of the garage there. That's going to take the uh, supply from the two new arrays and it goes around. You can see it joins the existing trunking that comes in at the corner for the um, existing system. And they both go around and down into the trunking that already exists just here. Um, and then uh, obviously one of those will go through to the end phase system, the other side of the wall here. And the other goes into the new uh, Fox uh, ESS 1.5 kilowatt inverter where they've got their isolators um, below, which is uh, good to see. And um, yeah, otherwise it's um, all very neat because what I was expecting was that I'd need to use some of this space um, over on this part of the wall here. Um, we usually use this to hang some tools and other bits and bobs, but uh, yeah, that I thought was gonna get, have to get sacrificed for the new equipment, but it turns out it's gonna be a lot neater than I was expecting. Um, because the, uh, the little Fox inverter can fit neatly there and the end phase uh, control box can go the other side of the wall, which is um, really useful. So yeah, I'm uh, pretty pleased about that. So we seem to have replaced uh, torrential rain with extremely high winds today, um, which means I don't think we're going to actually make much more progress installing solar panels than we did yesterday, which is a shame. The electricians are here though, so they're continuing with their work inside, um, so hopefully all that will get done. So. Uh, worst comes to worst, at least we'll just be able to plug the panels into the inverters and away we'll go. Yeah, it's uh, not very pleasant up here. Bit of sunshine trying to peek through, but goodness, it's very windy. So this is the existing array. But the sum total of the uh, progress yesterday was, uh, was one anchor point installed. I have no idea if the uh, roof is going to turn up today or not. Um, yeah, I wouldn't blame him if he didn't. I think it's going to be uh, pouring it down in another hour or two. So uh, yeah, it could be this is a bit of a bust. But uh, yeah, when they do come back, we should be able to then just literally plug the solar panels into uh, the stuff that's been installed inside the house, but which will hopefully at least get done today. Goodness me. Whoa. So amazingly, Ryan the roofer has actually turned up and uh, it is a blowing an absolute hoolie at the moment, so I'm hoping that he's going to be able to make decent progress before it starts raining. Um, but yeah, we'll see how he gets on. Right, status update about 11 a.m. on the second day. So we've got Joshua here doing the uh, bits and bobs under the um, stairs. So we've removed the original um, uh, box that were, was connected to the Give Energy system bit of extra trunking has gone in, so that's now going over to the new box, which is the central hub for all the solar, and the end phase box has gone in at the side there as well. And uh, yeah, underneath the uh, changeover switch for the EPS, we're going to put a separate box for the EV charger, because um, that was actually causing us some problems with it tripping one of the RCDs. So uh, separating that out into its own little box should solve that problem, which is great. Um, so yeah, that's everything going on under the stairs. So on the outside of the house we've got a new bit of trunking coming down the side um, from the loft where the cables will go in. So the cables will go into the loft from the arrays uh, through this uh, trunking down the wall um, into the garage and uh, then through on the inside. And on the garage side of the wall we've got a new hole which is going to take some of the cables through uh, for the new systems um, into the understairs cupboard where the new consumer unit is and uh, that will all get hooked up in a little bit. So Ryan is soldering on although I'm not sure he's going to actually put any panels on today the wind is just absolutely horrendous.
So it's now Saturday morning. I didn't do a roundup at the end of yesterday because it was getting a bit dark by the time everyone left. Uh, but yeah, things are nearly done. Um, so we don't have the panels on yet. That's going to happen hopefully today. Ryan's going to come back and uh, finish those off. But everything else is done underneath the stairs and in the garage. So let me show you those very quickly now. So I've shown you this a few times now, but uh, this is now pretty much the finished job. Uh, we've got this new hatch here with the Henley blocks now all spliced up with the various supplies. Uh, goodness knows what's going on with that. It's uh, cables everywhere, but it's um, all hidden away nice and neat once the once the doors go on. So yeah, this is just a hole they, they cut and you just put this in and uh, seals that away. So that's good. Um, this uh, switch is as it was before. The um, original block um, above that for the give energy stuff has been moved. I'll show you that in a second. We now have a completely separate consumer unit here for the car charger. So uh, that's great. That means that um, it, there's no chance of this uh, tripping anything else, um, which is what was happening before. Um, so before the, the car charger was um, in this uh, consumer unit, um, it was here, but it was uh, tripping the RCD, um, but weirdly it was tripping the RCD on this side, not this one here. So there was something going on with the earthing on there. Maybe it was on the wrong, uh, the wrong block. So um, yeah, at least that's not, uh, not a problem anymore. It was only happening when the car was hitting 100%. And stopping the charger um, sort of prematurely before the end of the charging session. So, obviously, there was some sort of uh, leakage there going on. Um, but yeah, that's not going to be a problem anymore, so that's great. Um, now, obviously, we have this extra bit of trunking. There's a hole somewhere around here um, that goes through, and that uh, goes through to the other side of the garage, and um, that brings the supply uh, from the two new arrays into uh, this new consumer unit. So, this is what was installed. Um, to make everything nice and neat. We've got everything on here now. Uh, we've got the, uh, the give, uh, give Energy system um, is now over here, uh, along with the uh, Fox uh, inverter. Uh, we've got a spare block here, the Enphase gateway, and uh, the Enphase uh, contactor. So I guess, well, this looks like the Enphase contactor, and this box over here, I believe, is the Enphase gateway, and that's what's going to talk to the three Enphase microinverters. Um, and in addition to that, we've got our Shelly uh, uh, device here. This is the, um, the Pro EM50 or something like that, I think, something like that. Uh, and that's got uh, two uh, CT clamps. One goes around the, uh, the Enphase system and one goes around the, uh, the Fox uh, system. So um, that will give us all the data we need to do the experiment properly. So yeah, that's all looking nice and neat. Very pleased with that. Um, and uh, yeah, actually, I think it's a bit neater than it was uh, originally. So yeah, very pleased. And ironically, it doesn't actually look super different in here. Uh, we've got the addition of, of obviously of the uh, Fox inverter, a couple new um, uh, isolators just there, as I showed before. This is where the cable goes through. So um, there's a hole um, just there that goes through into the um, understairs cupboard, as I showed. Um, but uh, as a bonus, I've actually now got this Ethernet cable running through. So that's going to run all the way around um, the top of the roof here, uh, the ceiling, um, and around the corner and then down. And I'm gonna connect that into the Mixergy cylinder. And that will give us the ability to do um, uh, solar divert should we require it um, for, you know, if the tariffs change, there's not really a lot of point in us doing that at the moment, but it's nice to have that option um, if the tariffs change in the future and solar divert becomes a, a viable strategy again. Uh, and you can see we've also now got this second cable that comes in through that conduit. And you can see that that basically follows all the way around um, top of the garage. And the new bit is this bit here. And that goes up the outside. As I showed the, uh, yesterday, the new bit of black trunking on the outside of the house that runs up to the loft where the cables come in. And of course, the weather is significantly nicer today than it has been the last couple of days. And uh, that means that Ryan is going to be coming back today to finish off the panels. He got all the railings done yesterday, so that's great. Um, but yeah, sadly wasn't able to do the panels. Um, but yeah, that hopefully he'll be able to get those done today and uh, the job will be done ready for next week when the electricians will come back and turn everything on. So yeah, looking forward to that. And finally the panels are going on, huzzah! Much better weather today.
So the panels were finally fully installed by about 10 a.m. on that Thursday morning and then we were able to energize the two systems, get those commissioned and set up with the various apps. Uh, I'm going to go into a lot more detail about all of that um, in future videos, um, in particular all of the data analysis that's going to um, result from the experiment that we're running against the string inverter and the, and the microinverter. So yeah, I'm very excited to share all that with you as and when the time comes. Um, but for now, uh, the install, despite being somewhat delayed by the weather, um, ultimately wasn't too stressful. Uh, the scaffolding came down a few days ago, so we're all good now. And, and yeah, very pleased with the, uh, the work that uh, Green Team One did. So um, as I mentioned before, if you're interested in getting solar added to your house, Green Team One are definitely there for you. If, um, if you want to get in touch with them, check the uh, video description to, uh, and, uh, for their website and how to get in touch with those guys. And uh, tell them that I sent you if you do get in touch. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next one.